Hello everyone, my name is Richard Bantige, artist and owner of Bantige Arts Design Company. And today I just want to show you a video that I hope would bring you some value that you can apply when doing your own art. And if you're not an artist and you're still watching this video, please enjoy the ride my friend because I'm about to talk a whole lot of nonsense. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but I do hope this helps you understand my process. I'm not an art professor, so if I say something that's a bit unconventional, it's because I've always been a self-taught artist and I can only share what I know from my experiences. So, as you've seen already, I started the sketch by minimizing any rough lines. This is a first for me since I usually draw my sketches very rough and messy. I wanted to improve my figure study without making a lot of mistakes. After that, I laid down my values by adding some pencil shading, always keeping in mind where the light comes from. I used a paper stub to blend in the pencil with the paper, keeping just the right amount of shading as intended. At this point, I also made sure that I have some clean lines to go over with my Micron ink pen. By keeping the shades, this will allow me to achieve a texturized green when I lay the markers down since the pencil would end up being visible in the end. The next step is inking, but like in a lot of things, I get so impatient and always want that instant gratification. For this piece, instead of inking the whole drawing, I ended up jumping ahead with the color because I was too excited to see how it would look like over the pencil. My goal is to keep the drawing vibrant and make the colors pop against the black as much as possible. I like to work in segments because it keeps me somewhat organized. As far as materials go, I tend to use anything I can find that is applicable. As you can see, I've used many different brands here like Posca, Sharpie, Concept, and Brush Makers. I know a lot of artists use Copic markers, but I think that other less expensive brand also works. In my experience, it's not always the most expensive materials that gives the best results. It's how you use your tools to your advantage and making it work for you. Sometimes it takes some learning and experimenting, but as long as you're happy with the result, then that's how it should be. After seeing the result of the markers against the ink, I went ahead and completed the outline of the person on the left before coloring it. After that, I cleaned out my inking with some finer details. I used some stifling techniques to show some textures on the flak jackets. The photo reference I used for the drawing is a picture I took of my marines while they were installing a high power run up in an airfield. Here you can see them standing on top of aluminum mat while being lifted by a forklift in the background. As I get farther down in the background, I noticed that my subjects were starting to disappear. So I decided to draw white around them and use my blender marker to increase the opacity of the background, separating it from my subjects. Anyways, I know everyone's attention span is very short nowadays. So if you manage to make it this far without getting bored or angry with me, then good for you, and I thank you for watching. But I'm going to end this video now, and I hope that you learned something from my process. I wish to continue making videos like this in the future, so please give this video a like, share it, subscribe to my channel, or follow me on Instagram and hang out with the cool kids. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.